hello and welcome again to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our coach and good friend, John Opaluski. How are you today, John? Jim, I'm doing well. It's good to be with you uh, today and uh, so excited to have back with us in Pod 83 here, Brian Pruitt. Yeah, Brian just killed it on our last, on, on Pod 82. But, but like we said at the end of that, we just kind of scratched the surface on some things. Um, yeah. Brian, could you give us a, a, a 30 to 45 second recap of where we left off and, and uh, we can take it from there. Maybe for those who didn't listen, didn't hear the last one, what are we talking about? Well, we, we've been talking about discipleship and the importance of it. What, what some of the gaps we saw in the last 12 months, um, uh, what was happening in our world. And one of the statements I made was that just because the, the storm has passed does not mean that the wounds have healed. And we need to be careful in regards to that. Um, and discipleship is going to play a, a major role and, uh, and make sure that the body of Christ is prepared um, in the future when things like this happen again, if they happen again. Yeah. Well, and we, we talk about the end, they will happen again. That, yeah. that Jesus comes, he, he talks about hard times as being birth pains. And so we, right. before a baby comes, the birth pains get closer and more severe. And I think you look back at, at my tenure as a pastor, Y2K, would have been nothing today. It wasn't a big deal. And uh, the Twin Towers going down, that was harder than Y2K. And yeah. COVID, for, because it affected everybody in, in a very yeah. personal way, not just a national way, is harder yeah. than, than the Twin Towers. And so we're kind of left with what's next and the importance of what you're doing now, which is you know leading people to Jesus, but also preparing them in this season for, for what's next. So as you look towards the challenges that we all biblically know, prophetically know, are in front of us, what, what needs to shift in our discipleship? You know, I, I, it's great that they memorize tenets and scriptures and doctrines. I think that's important, but, but we can miss a very practical, we can memorize the word love, but never know how to do it in a, in a, in a tested way. So Thanks. what are some of the things we need to change as we move into 2021, 22, 23? Um, I think you said it. While, while Bible studies are great, yeah. um, your memorization is needed. Yeah. Uh, attending classes is great. Um, what you saw the greatest need in regards to discipleship was during this past year uh, in our world is relationship. Okay, it's it's relationship. Um, we refer to it as many different things in society: mentorship. <laughs> um, internships and, and Chris call it discipleship at the, at the core of it all, it is relationship. Yeah. And so I, I can, I can know all of these scriptures and have no relationship with anyone. Yeah. And, and at that point I'm sitting in the house, isolated, scratching my head and struggling. Cause I don't have anybody to call to say, I'm losing my mind in here. <laughs> um, what stay home and stay safe showed us was that the importance of of discipleship is relationship yes. that there needs to be somebody in my life that has access to me and that i have giving access to them to call me not to just hold me accountable and say how are you living okay but right. to call me say hey how are you doing today hey what's going on how can i help you uh, and be able to have even some tough conversations, you know, some hard conversations, but some loving conversations. I see relationship as the core to discipleship. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. Okay, relationship yeah. is a discipleship. Yeah. And if, you, if you're just shooting Bible classes at people, right. I mean, it's good. It's never a bad thing to be in the Bible, but, that, but don't kid yourself and think that I'm being discipled because of that. Right. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons Jesus didn't write a book and say, read it. He said, follow right. me. Right. right. There you there's go. You're going to learn watching me that you're not going to learn just listening to my greatest thoughts, paragraph by paragraph. There are, we need mentors. We, we need and tormentors, right? We need people that they're really <laughs> We're get through, through pain, you know, refine us to, to be what we can be. Yeah. I, I think of my own life. I think of the people who have had the, the, the most impact on my life. Yeah. Uh, they and people who I would consider they have discipled me. Okay, yeah. um, much of who I am is based on what these men have poured into me, yeah. and it was they gave me access to their life. Yeah. It was a follow me meant mindset. It yeah. was a follow me. I got to take a seat at their table. I got to interact with their family. I got to see how they live their life outside of that Bible study. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So, because uh, everybody's bringing the best of them to the Bible study. Right. right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't bring the worst you to the Bible study. Okay? <laughs> I, 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 I want to I want to show up on your tough day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you deal with it. I want to know you're human. Right. I want to see how you see. I want to see you and your wife argue and resolve it. Right. And And here's the thing. Yeah. Not everybody should have the access to do that. Of course, you don't just give everybody the access to do that. But somebody in your life has earned the right to sit at the table in your life. Somebody has earned. And if there's nobody who's earned the right to sit at the table in your life, there may be a way to guard it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we we do these things where we say, name five sermons that have changed your life. And they give up like three minutes. And and they give up after about a minute, you know? And then you say, now name five people that have changed your life. And everybody can do 10 in 30 seconds. That's that's what we're talking about. It's people that that display it. We we learned about it, but we need to see it. The word still needs to take on flesh and go so we can behold the glory of God. And if it doesn't, it's not just Jesus's life, the word taken on flesh. It's our, it's us absorbing the word and taking on that word, our flesh taking on the word, word taking on our flesh I, that, that makes us, that gives us the right to be heard, doesn't it? That's right. So that's, that's my thought and ideal in regards to discipleship, that, that programs, courses, uh, all those things are great. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, Man, if you if we can't individually get down into people's life or allow them into our life, discipleship has not happened. So, so Brian, I I think that um, you're just you've just hit the nerve on this subject. Um, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 16 years old at a at a little coffee house in Saginaw, Michigan, oh. on Hamilton Street. Okay, and and within uh, 24 hours, I had. Uh, they called them sponsors back then. They didn't yeah. call them mentors. They called them sponsors. And I had a, a guy named Rick in my life. And uh, and Rick took myself and about a half a dozen other guys and taught us how to read scripture, how to interact with God, how to how to uh, be disciplined in that part of our lives. He, he, he would take us to the rec center. I can't even remember where the rec center was in Saginaw. Uh-huh. But there was a rec center in Saginaw that he would take us to and talk about an opportunity for discipleship to form, you know, play, play a five on five basketball with a group of guys, you know, yeah. and, but Rick was just this, um, he was just this guy who loved us, who modeled Jesus for us. And, you know, I thought Rick at that point, I thought Rick had been a Christian for 10 years. Uh-huh. I, I, I reconnected with Rick just a couple of years ago and found out he had only been a Christian one year. Wow. What is his name? What's his last name? Uh, Turbush is his, his last name, Rick Turbush. Oh, and uh-huh. uh, anyhow, um, so I, I see the power of this. Yeah. Here's, the frustrate, here's the frustrating thing to me. And, and I'm going to just own up and say it's frustrating in my own life. Yeah. Is how do I translate this? You know, conceptually, I think Jim and I buy into this 100%. Yeah. And I think anybody listening conceptually will probably do the same. But how do we pivot or, or actually translate it into action? I mean, what, what are some of the things that, you know, I just want your perspective on this, Brian. How do we get past just talking about this and actually doing it? Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that, uh, and I'll say this, and I can only, I'm, I want to speak from this perspective. Uh, in the last 14 years, uh, we've had a minute. My, uh, we started a ministry called Power of Dad, working with fatherless boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, the concept we're talking about in discipleship is what we've used through that program, getting in people's lives um, to to actually see these things come to pass. What we've done that we're using even within ministry and reaching the lost period is you've got to be very intentional. Okay, do very practical things. Uh, I think we've made discipleship uh, almost too spooky or too, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think we make this thing very practical. You see someone who needs food, Christ said, give it to them. You see someone who's thirsty, Christ said, make sure they have something to drink. You have an extra seat at your table, your dinner table, invite somebody to sit with your family and have dinner with them. 
Okay. You we're we're in COVID now, so somebody, well, I can't do that. You know somebody is isolated at home and you haven't seen them in a while, you pick up the phone, you call them. Um, you say, hey, why don't we have a Zoom? I, I, I want to see your face a little bit, okay? These are practical things. I think right now um, it is important as a body of Christ that we, we're we not so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good in regards to let's get really practical about discipleship and, re, and, and, get, and just start uh, putting wheels on what we're talking about here. So something as simple as picking up the phone right now in the world we live in and calling somebody it means the world to them to let them know that, hey, I was thinking about you today and I just wanted to call and see how you were doing. I had somebody reach out to me, a young man I mentored and discipled 15 years ago. He reached out to me this week. Hey, I was thinking about you and I wanted to know how you were doing. I thought that was, that, I said, man, that, that, that young man blessed me. Yeah, it's a paycheck, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he absolutely blessed me because I said he got it. He yeah. got it. He understands that at at its core, at its core, discipleship is just doing the loving little things consistent. Yeah, I get that. So let me ask you this one, because like you're saying, there are some challenges, but I I think they're short term challenges. If I understand right, we are going to be able to be back together again. Uh, We observe this. We used to be youth pastors before we, we became senior pastors. And we recognize that one of the most powerful discipleship tools we had at our disposal was the couch in our family room. That yeah. The kids that sat on that couch to watch the fight, kids that sat on that couch, kids that, that we, we realized that when they could walk to our refrigerator as if it were their refrigerator, we'd broken some barriers. They, they felt at home. And, that- and, and the kids that sat on the couch, the kids that walked to the refrigerator, many of them are still serving the Lord today. The kids that listened politely and said amen in the back row or, you know, they had a drug problem, their mom drug them to church, they didn't have a choice, you know, that kind of stuff. They're, yeah. they're all gone. But yeah. the kids that we did life with, that, that was the, the key indicator of, of moving into adulthood as, as uh, someone who continued in their faith in spite of the Marine Corps, in spite of the college professor, in spite of, you know, the opposite gender. They, they, we had a relationship with them. So when they had questions, they could ask them, uh, there's, they weren't just losing their religion. You That's know, right. if, if they walked out, they were losing their relationships. Those relationships mm-hmm. are pivotal to have them hold on. Excellent. Get, get, what are some of the practical ways we can do that as leaders? I, we have youth pastors, pastors, uh, associate pastors. We have entrepreneurs and managers. Name, name, what's the most effective way you have found to get someone from, I, I raised my hand, I said a prayer to, I'm calling you because I'm concerned about you. I learned that from you. What's, what are some really practical, effective ways that you've learned to do that through the years that we could implement today? Uh, let me start off by saying this, T-I-M-E. Yeah. <laughs> find, find ways to give them your time. The people I have that relationship with, that I call in my time of need or that I just, you know, that, that have had the greatest impact in my life in that way. Um, and the people who have given me their time and it moved me past. I'm, you know, I'm not just losing my religion. Like you said, but I would be losing relationship. Uh, relationship means an awful lot. And, and often I've held on to my faith in Christ because of the relationships that were around me. Okay. Um, so, things that were done was any way you can find a way to give someone your time that's costly though yeah yes if you can find a way to give them your time if you can find a a way to let them know that in my within my day i was thinking about you yeah you matter okay um if it's a card if it's an email if it's a text if it's a phone call if it's hey let's go grab a pop hey if you know if if there's a way you can allow me to Bring me into your world and let me know that you have given me one of the most valuable things that you can never get back, Yeah, which is your time. Yeah. You can win my heart and you can build relationship with me. If 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 there's no time involved, it's very, I'm, I may have heard what you said. I might even believe what you said, but it's very unlikely that I'm, that, uh, that, that we're going to war together. Right. Very unlikely. Yeah. It's so Brian, Brian, um, I'm thinking now from a, a, a pastor's perspective, a lead pastor's perspective, who's looking at uh, the uh, quality of discipleship that's happening within the congregation he or she is leading um, and wanting, they want to do better. That lead pastor 
wants to do better, wants their church to, to do better. Yeah. What would be maybe one or two next steps that you would mm -hmm. encourage a pastor to think about and then do? Uh, one of the things I would think uh, I would encourage them to do is this. Take the opportunity. You have the ear of your congregation and, and make sure that your voice is permeating the thought of uh, relationships when it comes to discipleship, the importance of relationship. Second of all, make sure that they can see you doing that. Mm -hmm. Who in, yeah. as, a, as a pastor, I am not exempt from that. Right. I model of that. Christ did not exempt himself from what discipleship looks like. He 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 modeled that. And right. so uh, I would say use your voice to speak that into your your people's heart and then use your life to model that before them. Um, find some people that you can pull into your own life. You'll begin to model that. And then those people are going to model that within your congregation. So the who, who are the people you're going to pull into your life to model that? OK, and then what what are you going to challenge them to do? The last conversation I had with probably one of the most influential people in my life was which was my elementary school basketball coach. His name was Coach Lawrence McKinley, an incredible man of God who discipled me. He really pointed me to Christ, even though it was years before I walked in the things of God. The last conversation I had with him, as I said, Coach, I want to thank you for everything you did for me. And he said, you can thank me when you find kids who are like you and you do for them what I did. I love it. Uh, and, and then he passed away. Uh, he passed away. But that has been, that that has stayed with me. Yeah. My whole, it has stayed with me my whole life. Those, those were his final words to me. Yeah. That I now have a responsibility to take the time that he showed and gave to me to, to allow others into my life the same way. I have a responsibility to do that. Yeah. It's so good. I, you know, I, I, I think I've observed this. I've lived long enough, I think, to observe this, that churches tend to take on the uh, personality and behavior of their lead pastor. Yes. Uh, in many, many ways. And so um, what I do means even more than what I say. And yes. uh and people, it's funny how people just pick up on what I do, even if it isn't in the spotlight. Right. In, just my, in, my, own, right, in yeah. my own private life, right? And so I think, man, it is just so good uh, and so practical. And I can hear pastors protesting, you know, I don't have enough time for that or I, I'm whatever. And, and, I, and I think what I hear you saying is we got we to gotta make space for that. Right. Uh, we have to. We have to. And, and, and let me say this, John, if, if we say if, as a pastor, if I say I don't have enough time for that, that's the headline. The details is what's in that for what's in it for me when I do that. Mm -hmm. Often we speak in headlines, but what's in the fine print? The fine print is what's in it for me once I invest that type of time. Here, let me help you out. There's no better way to grow your church. There's no better. The, the gentleman who spoke what he that coach who spoke what he spoke into my life. We have touched, we have touched thousands of young people based on that statement and the time he put inside of me. Yeah. So here's my point. If, if you're saying, well, what's in it for me when it comes to me investing my type of my time into people like that? Oh, those people that you've invested your time in, then go invest their time in others. Right. Yeah. So if you're saying, man, I, I just want to grow my church, then, then then there you go. That that's a that's a great way to do it. But let me suggest that that you love people. Let me suggest that you remember that those aren't numbers, that those are people right. and that they need your time. They need your care and probably more so now than ever. But we remember that you too are a person and you need some peace and you need some rest. So as you as you do this and as your congregation does this, there should be some borders and some stipulations on how you do this so you don't burn yourself out. Yes. I don't, yeah. If you don't have borders around even how you disciple people, man, you'll wear yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had a good friend. I said, how do you, how do you make so many disciples in your church? He said, this is going to like, don't tell anybody I said this. I'm like, okay, I, I won't. And here I'm going to say it. I'm not going to say his name, but he said, what do you, what do you love to do? I said, well, what do you mean? He was like, do you like to hunt? I said, love to hunt. Do you like to fish? Love to fish. Do you love to camp? Love to camp. Hike. Okay. Every time you do that, take five guys with you and make them pay for you to go. 
<laughs> you want to go to Canada fishing? Go to Canada fishing. That's Just take five guys with you. And for that yeah. week out in the bush when you're, you know, you're sleeping under the stars and dealing with the rain and the frostbite and the, you come back like you've been to war together. Like you yeah. would be closer. Just take that time. And I, you know, obviously that's not what everything that I do, but when I think retreats, I don't think, what do they want? I think, what do I want? Yeah. And come with me. And for some reason that really, I come back a better man from the experience and we all come back better men from having suffered together in some way and, you know, enjoy the campfire and the stars. So whatever that is, you'd like to work out, get somebody to work out with you. You know, you'd like to invest, get somebody to invest with you. It's, it is friendship that there's, yeah. there's uh, discipleship begins in some ways with, with friendship, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, right on. Well, John, I think we have used our time, have we not? Yeah, I'm, and I'm sad to say that we've used our time because, Brian, this has just been delightful to, to <laughs> spend time with you. You know, what I love about this last season here, this last few minutes, is it, it's insightful, but it's not out of reach. This is very Thank simple. You. When you're going to go to Home Depot, take your neighbor with you. If you're going to, oh. you know, read the book of John, read the book of John with five guys. Like yeah. that's, that's what this is. You do what you do, what you do. Just invite people onto the couch when you do it. If you're going to watch the final four tournament, you know, and, and you're not afraid of, you know, disease, <laughs> you know, invite people, you know, that's, that's what pastors do. So it's, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. It's an honor to be with you guys. Uh, like I said, I hope that uh, share some things that have been encouraging and helpful to those who will be listening and um, hey, praying for us as the body of Christ, man. I love you guys. God bless you. Love you too. Thanks. And, and John, any closing words from you today? Uh, no, just again, Brian, thank you for carving out time and, and really helping us to get our minds wrapped around this, this uh, most important subject of discipleship. We hope sometime down the road, you'll join us again. I would love to give your brother Dave a big hug for me. I'll do that. I will do that. Right. Coach, coach said said hello. I will. Well, dear listener, thanks for being a part of this time with us. We hope it's been fruitful for you in a, in a, in a major way. I, it's funny. We just had a short conversation, but if you do what we said, disciples will be made. Lives will be changed. We'll create those five people that have changed other people's lives. We can't name the five sermons, but we can name the five people. You are going to be, if you put this to practice, some, somebody's five people. You're going to be on their list and you're going to create people. That, that will be on other people's list of five people that changed your life. So we hope you'll take it, put it to use today. We're praying for you and God bless you as you all continue to lead from the line.